if you lose this piece of paper with your 24 words on it, you'll never be able to regenerate this piece of paper ever again. And every computer working together on earth will never be able to generate this piece of paper ever again. So don't lose the piece of paper. What's up YouTube, it's your boy Rhett, back at it again with another video. Today I'm gonna be going through how to set up your Ledger hardware wallet from scratch. And I'll be using the new Ledger Nano S Plus for the demonstration. After the device is fully set up, I'll be showing you guys how you can send and receive Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency using your Ledger hardware device. If you guys wanna learn why you would want a hardware hardware wallet in the first place and what the difference is maybe between a hardware wallet and something like MetaMask, I'll have a video up in the cards and down in the description that explains what a hardware wallet is and why you might want one. And then if you're wondering which hardware wallet you should be getting from Ledger, if you're set on getting a Ledger hardware wallet, I'll have a comparison video down in the description and up in the cards as well. So go down below and smash the like button for Bitcoin security and let's level up your brains. <laughs> All right, guys, so here we are with the Ledger Nano S Plus, and I'm just gonna plug this in for the very first time, and we'll go through the setup together. You can see, welcome to the Ledger Nano S Plus, press the right button to continue, download Ledger Live, I've already done that, and then press right. Use buttons to navigate menus and lists, so we're gonna go back and forth with these buttons. Press both buttons to select. So if we were confirming something, we'd press both at the same time. Hold both buttons anytime to access settings and more. Start Ledger Live for help during setup. We have the option to set up as a new device or restore from a previous recovery phrase. So if you're moving a new ledger onto this device, you would click this restore from recovery phrase option. And then this is just a reminder that you can hit both buttons to select. So I'm gonna select set up as new device. I'm gonna choose a pin code with four to eight digits and I'll be back here in a second. And now it's gonna tell me to write down my recovery phrase. So I'm gonna click both buttons. My device will generate 24 words and they are your recovery phrase. You guys might be seeing in the video that the screen is flickering. And I think that that's just an issue with the frame rate of my iPad versus the device. Uh, because in real life, I don't know if you can see it better here. It's just not, no, it looks like it's the same with the iPhone. It's not flickering in real life. Uh, it looks really good, but unfortunately it looks not very good on the iPad camera. So my device will generate 24 words. They are my recovery phrase. I'm gonna hit next. This is your only backup to restore your accounts if needed. So this 24 re word recovery phrase is the way that you're going to back up your private key basically to all of the wallets that are held on this Ledger hardware wallet. So you're gonna wanna take the 24 word recovery phrase sheet that came with your Ledger Nano S Plus, or if you want to be a bad like me, you can buy a hammer and some crypto tags to engrave your seed phrase in bulletproof sheets of titanium. Flimsy piece of paper versus bulletproof sheets of titanium. I think we know which one wins. So link to this down in the description if you want to get one. That being said, I will be using the flimsy piece of paper for this demo. So let's continue here. This is my only backup. Going to hit next. Write it down on your recovery sheet in the correct order. The order does matter. So make sure that you have the order correct. I'm going to press both buttons. I'm going to write down my seed phrase in this piece of paper, and then we'll continue from after the seed phrase has been confirmed. And something to mention here about the seed phrase when I went to write it down, this is just a blank piece of paper here. But when I went to write this down, it's important that you get the numbers right, right? So it's gonna show you one and then two on the right and then three on the left and then four on the right and then five on the left and then six on the right. Make sure you're not going one, two, three, four, five, six or your numbers will be wrong and you will maybe permanently up your seed phrase and not be able to get your coins back if you ever need to regenerate this wallet. Okay, I'm back here and it says press Press left to verify your 24 words. So if you want to go back and read those 24 words again and write them down again, you can press left and see those 24 words in order again. So here it says, confirm your recovery phrase. I'm gonna hit both buttons to continue. And then it's gonna give me a short quiz that basically says like, what is number three? What is number 17? What is number 21? So that Ledger can be pretty sure that I wrote down my seed phrase correctly with the right corresponding numbers. Okay, so that was a pain in the ass. It actually made me verify every single one of the 24 words, which is good because you do know that it's correct then, but it does take like two or three minutes there to do that. So my recovery phrase is set. Keep it in a secure place. I'm going to hit right. If lost, stolen, or forgotten, all your assets will be irredeemably lost. If you lose this piece of paper with your 24 words on it, you'll never be able to regenerate this piece of paper ever again. And every computer working together on earth will never be able to generate this piece of paper ever again. So don't lose the piece of paper. And if you're worried that this flimsy piece of paper might be lost or destroyed like this, maybe it accidentally gets ripped up into nothing. Now all of the money that's on this wallet will be gone forever because I'm never going to be able to put this back together, which is why it's important if you're holding really significant amounts of money that you go get metal plates so that your seed phrase can never be destroyed like this. These were obviously blanks with nothing on them, but it goes to show you how flimsy these pieces of paper are. Like what if it gets wet? What if it gets lit on fire, right? The metal plates are just the better option. So again, never share your 24 words with anyone and Ledger is never gonna ask
ask you for them. So no one. Don't share them with me. I'm never going to ask you for them. Don't share them with really anybody. So press both buttons to continue. And now it's going to process and create the wallet. My device is ready. Go to the dashboard. Now I'm going to install an app. So I'm going to click install app here. And it's going to say use manager in Ledger Live to install more apps. Okay, so I'm just going to log in here to Ledger Live. And this is basically an interface that's going to allow you to manage any number of Ledger devices. So you can see here my total balance of $3.15 is basically just Ethereum that I'm never going to be able to get back because the gas fees are too high. And that's sitting in my old Ledger Nano X. So what we want to do per the instructions on our Ledger Nano S Plus is click over here onto Manager. Ledger is going to say that we need to allow Ledger Manager on our device. So we're going to come over here and we're going to click both buttons for Allow Ledger Manager. And we'll see that we have all of these different wallets that we can install on our device. So let's get started by installing a Bitcoin wallet, an Ethereum wallet, and a Polygon wallet. And so what we're going to do over the course of the rest of this video is I'm going to show you how to send and receive Bitcoin to your Bitcoin wallet. And then I'm going to show you how to transfer NFTs either to your Ethereum wallet or your Polygon wallet based on how my NFT situation here works. I'm pretty new to NFTs myself, and I think that they're a waste of money. But I do have one for the purposes of this video that I will show you how to send and manage from your Ledger device. So we can see there that while I was talking, all of the different wallets got installed. So now if we come over to our Ledger device, we can see that we have a Polygon wallet, an Ethereum wallet, and a Bitcoin wallet. So let's click on this Bitcoin wallet first. It'll say Bitcoin is ready. So next, let's come up to accounts here. You can see that I have old Bitcoin and Ethereum wallets from old Ledger devices, a Ledger Nano X and a Ledger Nano S. Let's click add an account here. We'll choose a crypto asset. We'll choose Bitcoin, hit continue. The device has the Bitcoin wallet open already. So I clicked open my Bitcoin wallet. I'm going to call this Bitcoin Ledger S Plus. It's going to be a native SegWit wallet. You can show all address types. So you could give it a taproot address also uh, or a SegWit address address or a legacy address. I'm just going to do native SegWit for now and click on add account. And that account was added successfully. So now I can click on done. So now you can see that I have a native SegWit Bitcoin Ledger Nano S Plus wallet right here. I'm going to add a new account for the Ethereum wallet that is on this device. I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to need to open the Ethereum app on the device. I'll just double click there. It's synchronizing here. I'm going to call this Ethereum Ledger S Plus and add an account here. And then I'm going to add one for Polygon Matic and we'll hit continue. The Ledger prompts us to open our Polygon app that we just downloaded from Manager. Took a little while to synchronize there. We're going to call this Polygon S Plus just like the other ones and we'll click on add account. So now that we've set up all these different accounts, let's see how we can receive Bitcoin to this Bitcoin wallet that we just created. So we're going to come over here to the left hand side of the screen and we're going to click on receive and we're going to receive to the Bitcoin LS Plus wallet that we just created that's on this Ledger. Ledger Nano S Plus. The device is going to tell us to open our Bitcoin app. We're going to confirm that. And now here is our Bitcoin address. So we can take this and click on copy. And when Ledger is showing you guys this address on the screen, the way that you're able to validate that this has not been corrupted and that your Ledger Live app has not been inflicted with any viruses is that this address that's on the screen, BC1, QTM, 3M, blah, 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 should be exactly the same as the address that's being shown on your device. So I can go through through and I'll probably read the first six digits of the address on my device and make sure that it matches what's on the screen and probably the last three digits of what's on the screen and match it to what's on the device. So that looks good to me. So I'm going to click on approve. The address was shared securely and now I can go to strike and make a transaction to that address. We will open up strike in our web browser and you could fund this from anywhere. It doesn't have to be strike, but I'm going to use strike because I think it's the easiest way to do this. Link to strike down in the description if you want to sign up and I'll have a video up in the cards that explains why Strike is such a cool app. So I'm going to log in here. I'm going to deposit $10, confirm, deposit successful. I'm going to refresh this page. We should have $10.52. I'm going to click on this QR code up in the top right, and I'm going to paste this Bitcoin address, and I'm going to send the maximum amount of Bitcoin that I can send. It's going to tell me that I have a five cent mining fee, so I can send $10.47. I'm going to click on confirm, and my payment was successful in Strike. So now you can see I have $0 here. And when I come back to the portfolio screen in Ledger Live, you can can see that latest operations has been updated with this Bitcoin LS plus address and it received $10 and 49 cents of Bitcoin, which is about what we sent from strike. And now let's say I wanted to receive Ethereum instead. I would do the exact same thing. I would click on receive and I would click on Ethereum LS plus. Please only send Ethereum or Ethereum token to Ethereum accounts. I'm going to hit continue. 
The device is going to tell me to open my Ethereum wallet. I'm gonna click both buttons. The application is ready, so it's going to load here. And now this is my Ethereum address. So I would copy this and then send it to whatever exchange or however I was trying to move Ethereum into my Ledger Nano S Plus. Maybe you wanna move your coins off the exchange once a week and you could automate that with a script from the Gemini API that I'll leave a link to up in the cards. You could put this address into your Gemini API script and it could automatically withdraw your Ethereum to your Ledger Nano S Plus wallet. Exact same thing that we just did with Bitcoin. This video has been a bit of a doozy. You can probably see that I have some Polygon in my wallet now and you're like, where the did that come from? I'm either going to release that NFT video as a separate video or this video will be very long. So we'll have to wait and see sort of what happens with that. But I did wanna come back here and show you how to send this Bitcoin because the Bitcoin has obviously settled at this point. It's gotten lots of different confirmations. And so I'm going to come in here and send this Bitcoin to my Gemini exchange account. So we'll just log into Gemini real quick here and we'll click on transfer and we'll click on deposit into Gemini. We'll click on currency here and we'll click on uh, BTC continue. We'll copy this address here and we'll come back to Ledger Live and we'll paste in that address and we'll hit continue. We'll send the maximum amount. So all of the BTC in the wallet and then we can change this fee here to see you know, how fast do we wanna send the Bitcoin? Do we wanna send it at three sats per byte, 12 sats per byte or 14 sats per byte? And if you're unfamiliar with why you would want to set fees higher or lower and the speed of the transactions, I have a really good video that I did a couple weeks ago about how the fee that you pay affects how quickly your transaction is going to be processed. So I'll leave a link to that up in the cards. For now, let's just do fast because we want to, you know, get this over with and have this confirmed as quickly as possible. So let's go down here and hit continue. And then if you do click advanced here, you can change your fee amount to whatever you want. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to do standard and then fast and we'll hit continue and we'll send this Bitcoin. So now we're going to go over to our device. I'm going to have to actually unlock it here, open the Bitcoin wallet. And then now I'm going to verify that the details on the wallet, on the physical hardware wallet, it match what is showing up on the screen. So review output number one here. That is the amount of Bitcoin that I wanted to send. That is the correct address. And I'm just going to click on approve. And then I'm going to confirm the fees as well. And so now you can see in real time, it's broadcasting that transaction and the transaction is sent. So now if I go back to Gemini, I'm going to come over here to balances and just view the most recent deposits and transfers. All right, guys. So it took a little while to settle there. It needed, you know, however many confirmations for Gemini to show it up here. But here is the deposit of the Bitcoin that came from from the Ledger hardware wallet within Ledger Live. And so that's really basically all you have to do. If you wanna send things, you hit send, we covered that. If you wanna receive things into Ledger, you know, you hit receive, we covered that. And then obviously to add new device accounts, you're gonna come into manager and then approve Ledger manager on your device. And then you can add whatever wallet it is that you wanna add here. For some of the more obscure altcoins, Ledger is going to require a third party wallet, right? So like if you're trying to use internet computer token or even Cardano. If you install Cardano, when I was coining in the past, I was using, I think it was called like your Roy wallet. And it was a browser extension that was very similar to MetaMask, but obviously, you know, connected to your Ledger hardware device and that your Roy wallet or that MetaMask wallet, if you're using MetaMask is just like a user interface on top of the security that is provided by your Ledger Nano S plus in this case. Next week, I'll have a video out on how to manage NFTs from your Ledger device. I did all this work in one marathon session, but it was way too long for one video because NFTs are super confusing and that whole process is insanely frustrating. So if you do want to see that video, go down below and subscribe so that you can get that video when it comes out next week. Or check the description if you're watching this in the future and the link to that video should be down there. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you guys did get lost at any point. I do still respond to all the comments and hopefully I'll be able to help you out if you did end up getting stuck. Like the video if you learned something and subscribe for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.